<laughs> well, hello everyone and welcome. This is Lana McMurray of freetothrivecoaching.com with a new expert interview series um, on the 12 keys of self-recovery. And these are 12 essential elements that I found to be instrumental in my life to help me to recover myself. And um, I was someone who was bound with uh, a fear of man really mm. bad and, and the opinions of others i was mm. always thinking about what other people would think and i would alter myself and and i had social inhibition so badly that i would literally alter my performance if i was in front of someone and in this series i am going to be interviewing experts who personally resonate with one or more of these keys and use them in their business or personal lives and so before i introduce my guest today I uh, just want to quickly reveal the keys, and they are choice, energy, pleasure, intuition, self-compassion, um, non-judgment, present moment, holistic living, 100% responsibility, organization, gratitude, and intention. So, without further delay, I want to introduce Brooke. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Let's let her talk. <laughs> Brooke Campbell. Brooke, and I'm, I'm just... Brooke is the founder and director of Creative Connections, and I like how you use a K, LLC. Um, she is a licensed creative arts therapist, registered board certified drama therapist, a trainer, a professional actor, a director, and a writer. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And a mom, so I might have to get her for one moment. Hold on. Okay. Hey, this <laughs> is authentic. I, I told you. <laughs> this is All the right. real world. While Brooke is taking care of her lovely daughter, I'm going to continue telling you about her. Um, Creative Connections has partnered with hospitals, recreation centers, and domestic violence agencies. As a professional actor, she is a member of the Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, and Actors Equity Association. Brooke has extensive experience working with autism, mental illness, trauma, women's issues, parenting topics, eating disorders, children, elderly, and individuals who have suffered from various forms of abuse. Brooke served several years as the coordinator and team supervisor of a research-based creative arts therapy program. And she has lectured at universities, police stations, <laughs> wow, national conventions, and at agencies. Brooke has supervised students from Columbia University, New York University, and the New School. What's the New School? The new school is in New York. It's um, they have um, very holistic programs. It's great. So they had a, a certificate program in creative arts therapy. So I took on intern studying creative arts therapy. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So and uh, she contributed a chapter for a book about trauma and drama therapy. And Brooke holds a master's in drama therapy from New York University. Welcome, Brooke. Well, oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. So, uh, would you share a little bit of your story and um, how you came into this business and into this great work? Sure. No, I appreciate it, and and I love, I love what you're doing. First of all, it's it's very important, and um, I really resonated with you know the topic of presence, we'll, we'll, which we'll go into a little bit later. But how how I. Um, became a part of this business. First of all, um, I, I started out as an actor and an actor educator. Um, that's my background was in theater and psychology, um, studying that at undergrad mm -hmm. um, in college. And I traveled with a company of actor educators and we went into school settings and we went into anywhere from elementary school to college and we we performed specific issues around what that community what that school those students were facing mm -hmm. so we created really authentic scripts and scenes around date rape around wow. abuse around bullying around you know alcoholism suicide and uh we really um so we would perform the scenes and we would stop right at the climactic, before the climactic part of the scene, and we would open it up to the audience and remain in character. And what I found wow, so fascinating awesome. in, in that work, and this was you know almost ten years ago, um, this was before I went for my master's in drama therapy. What I found doing that work was how 
bullies, you know, would stand up and say, hey, you know, th this is what I do, or, you know, or, or people, kids that were bullied saying, you know, this happens to me. They were so caught up in the scene work that they would connect with the messages we were, uh, we were sharing, and um, they were very honest about it, and we got to, uh, you know, problem solve and get to the root of their, um, you know, their issues in a really authentic way. So from that, I learned wow, drama really heals. And so from that, I, I went for my master's in drama therapy. Um, you know, my background is as in a professional actor. So I've you know, performed in, in, in plays in New York. I've, you know, done films and, uh, and TV. And, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, um, in the, the, the different acting units. But what I found was that it, it wasn't enough for me. What I, I felt more fulfilled doing was connecting with others and using that message uh, dramatic performance as a platform to connect with others and connect with the truth and connect with their their problems in a way where we can problem solve together. So from that, I found the drama therapy program at NYU. It's a two-year program. Um, and really thrived in that. We had to do thesis. We had audition, interview. Mm -hmm. Um, I had internships working with uh, children on the autism spectrum and working with adults with mental illness using drama therapy. And that was you know almost ten years ago and. You know, from there, I did a lot of agency work and, uh, you know, work with domestic violence uh, agencies specifically um, and hospitals. And from there, I realized, you know what, I, I, what really touched me was helping others in leadership positions. I took on supervisory positions, so I would be mentoring other creative arts therapists, other coaches, uh, other students. And I found that I, I really enjoyed that teaching element. And okay. so I decided to open up my own business creative connections where I'm able to to do this work that I love um I partnered with hospitals and sorry if you hear my daughter in the no, background but it's I, okay. I noticed that my this work, is your real life so <laughs> and you know what I mean I I used my skills using creative techniques and and play and and drama even with my daughter and I just you know I, I see how much she's thrived um socially her social skills communication she's saying language development. She's not even two years old. So um, I, I love having the balance, the work-life balance. Yeah. And my business is really taking off. I do you know, Skype sessions. I do phone sessions. I do groups in the city with adults. I work with you know, autism. I do autism groups. I had uh, professionals that work in domestic violence, a, a domestic yeah. violence agency, the staff there that work with uh, victims who... Mm -hmm. um, victims of abuse, we had the, the, the clients, we had the women who encountered abuse write real stories of their survival. And we took their stories and we created monologues and I had the staff perform. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> a free community event. This was, uh, this was in October. October is Domestic Violence Awareness mm -hmm. Month. And I do it every year. And uh, so Creative Connections partnered, you know, with this domestic violence agency and a local university. And we opened it up and performed it. And it was debunking the myths around domestic violence and really sharing the real stories of survival. So I love now having the flexibility and being able to use, you know, my skills and my, my training in a way to really uh, connect with the community. Wow. You know, what it reminds me of growing up in the church myself, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a Christian and I grew up going to, you know, traditional Christian church, and um, there would be plays that they would act out, and mm. but usually in song, and it really um, helped someone to open up to the meaning of love or, or, or to teach a, a lesson. Or Now you see with Tyler Perry with all of his movies, a lot of them have a Christian theme. I can oh. see how drama can... Um, and in the Bible itself, it uses analogies, like how Jesus used to teach with stories. And I can see how those, I think spiritually or however, we receive the message more clear when mm -hmm. it's in a story mm -hmm. form. And we can see ourselves Absolutely. in that. Call it in this sort of drama therapy world, uh, they call it, you know, it's, it's more distance. It has this sort of aesthetic, artistic distance to it. So it's when someone, it, you know, much, it's much harder to, to tell um, your, your, your deepest feeling her to get a message across in a, in a using direct language. Yeah. I mean, we have yeah. so many things that we want to hide from ourselves. We yeah. Oh yeah. Through, you know, drama. Self-protectionism. So yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Through and through analogy and mm -hmm. through 
imagery and visualization, all of these things that are, are within storytelling, it comes alive. So and we, we feel we connect more with it. It's so. like it goes right to the subconscious and starts reprogramming it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, wow. it's incredible how, you know, I mean, I've, I've worked, you name it, I've worked with <laughs> frogs, you know, with, with, with abuse. I've worked, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've worked with, um, you know, elderly. I have a 74 year old client right now uh, who comes every week into the city for our, our oh. creative drama therapy group. Um, I, I, I've worked with your know, children on the autism spectrum mm -hmm. who or did not have language and mm -hmm. now use drama therapy. And I do a lot of video work where I videotape them using appropriate communication. Wow. And I role model it back to that, that they're really developing social skills, learning, communication. That must be so oh. freeing. That, it just... It opens it up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. even the hospital setting. I mean, I work with cancer patients. Mm -hmm. come alive telling me their stories of strength. And it, it's just really through through this, this, this state creative state. I'm amazed state. by this. I, I, I had never yeah. heard of this before. I, I, I mean... <laughs> I, I'm yeah. really amazed by this. This is this is incredible. Thank you. Yeah, I worked. Um, one setting was with adults that had um, multiple sclerosis, and it, it was really challenging. It was years ago, it was in um, NYU Medical Center Hospital, and I was called in to to work in a group setting. And you know, I I, <laughs> I learned more about that illness that um, and they they suffer you know excruciating pain and. A lot of the patients were in wheelchairs and, and confined. And a lot of what I do, it includes get like sharing a story or getting up and really moving with um, whatever is coming up, whatever issue or theme or enacting or role playing out. And I thought to myself, wow, this is really challenging. They're, they're bound. They're, it, it hurts for them to move. And so what we did was we, we used the circle. We went around and um, – People, we added on just just verbally. They didn't even have to get up or move. You know, adding on to a story. We created this beautiful story about hope and survival wow. and 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 higher powers. And and it, it, for some, it did motivate them to get up. They they felt almost rejuvenated through the work to, mm -hmm. that their bodies actually had. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, it, it, tapping into our creativity is really is really key, really essential. So, oh, it's, awesome. That's a great thanks. work. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that work. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your work. <laughs> so your key that you selected was non, I mean, it was a presence. So how do you, what does that mean to you, presence? Right. So to me, what um, many things, uh, especially what I learned at studying drum therapy at NYU, the first thing they taught us was just, just that you are enough, that, that, your um, your skill set, your your mind, your thoughts, um, your feelings, being in the physical space, feeling 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 where you are in the moment, and taking in um, what's outside of you. So, really being uh, receptive to activating the, the different senses that you have. So, you, what do I see around me, and what and how does that affect me? How does that touch me? And, resonate, connect with me, you know, what do I, what do I hear, and what do I smell, and all of those things, um, and, and I really had to learn that it was tough, because especially, I, I never forget, one of the, um, one of the groups that I ran um, in, uh, in, a, in a hospital setting, one of my internships with patients that have um, mental illness, I always, I felt that I would have to go in and have a, have a specific plan and a group plan, mm -hmm. And um, what I, and this was a, as a student years ago, what I found um, was that when I had some, when I had sort of my own agenda, that other people, you know, if they didn't connect with yeah. that, wouldn't go, it, it wouldn't be authentic. It wouldn't, it wouldn't give rise to like sort of the natural flow and development of, of life and sort of meeting their needs at the moment. And I'll never forget, you know, my supervisor said, you know, Brooke, like, you know, you, you make a plan, you plan to change it in the moment, get rid of it, and just know that you're yeah. it. Enough. And, you know, so from that, I've learned to just go into any situation, like even today, I have no script, I have nothing in front of me, you know, I'm going off of my, what I've been and what, mm -hmm. what, com what comes to me, and, you know, you, you trust the process, yeah. and you, you and you know, and also not only trusting it, but you can also speak to that. Yeah. Also, say 
you know, hey, you know what, this is what's coming up for me right. and I'm okay with that or I'm accepting this or maybe I'm not accepting it, but I'm going, I'm, I'm hopeful that I will accept it. So, um, and, and when you do that, I find it specifically with the clients that I work with, it's a role model for them that they can do the same. That, mm-hmm. that Brooke doesn't always know what the next step is, she doesn't know what the outcome yeah. will be. Um, we can't premeditate life, right. you know, we can't right. plan that. Um, and so... When we can just, you know, sort of breathe and uh, be receptive and and honestly just have um, a sense of hopefulness and openness that, um, and, and, and also like just jumping into the unknown and what, what, what happens with that and trusting that process. So, you know, a lot of times I'll do, I'll go towards something that scares me. I'll go <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ah, you know, can I take that on? Because yeah. I, I find that there's such growth right. when we can, you know, challenge ourselves and we can, um, we can push through that, uh, that fear. So I, so I, I, I like to think that I model that, I role model that in my, you know, in my, in my business and my work life and my, um, in my personal life and um, especially in acting too. I mean, they taught that at, at the conservatory work that they did. You know what? It's like you can't take on a character or a role mm-hmm. if you accept how you are in this very moment, mm-hmm. you know? So we have to, even in, in our studies of, you know, acting, we would have to get up and just say, hey, you know, I'm feeling fear. I'm feeling anxiety. I'm trembling. I my heart is is you know pounding. And so to really name that once we once we name it, we yeah. accept it, witness, and people hear it, they connect with it, they get it, they know what it feels like. Then we can relax, and then we can move forward in the work. Um, so it's so like that's you're saying, right. I can handle this. But you're yeah. telling yourself, I can handle this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the same thing even um, with my daughter. You know, I I, I had. She's 17 and a half months old, and when uh, when she was born and a half, I took a leave. I took a uh, maternity leave when I was working at, uh, as a coordinator at a domestic violence agency, and um, I, I had yeah, I had six months off. And in that time, I I used my skills um, using creativity, using my creative techniques, dramatic techniques with her, and uh, we had such a you know we do have such a bond. And I found that from there, I, I really felt inside intuitively that I, I couldn't go back to, I mean, I love the work that I was, uh, that I was doing. I, I was doing it for a number of years. Um, but being away from her was, um, it, di- it didn't feel right to me. And so that's, that's when I decided to, and I had my business, but it was more on a smaller scale at that point. And, you know, I figure I talked to, to, talk to my husband is my business manager and very supportive of, of the work that I do. He knows the, the, the impact of it. It's helped him in his professional career as well. And when he was at grad school at NYU too, he sees the, the, the value of it. And, um, he said, you know, Brooke, like there's, a, there's a need for what you do. You know, why don't, this is a perfect time for you to segue from your own yeah. friend- um, from what you're doing for another agency, another person for a boss a, a, into you being your own boss. And so that actually be, being, having my presence and being like really in tune to what was, what was going on in that moment for me was, you know, this isn't, this doesn't feel right for me to leave her. I know that she'll, um, not be thriving as much, or I just, I knew that I had, I, I had what it took, what it takes, you know, as a mother, but also <laughs> with my background, mm-hmm. um, working with kids for so long using creative creative techniques and play play therapy things like that how much it uh, she she gained from it so 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 it's it's been nice to have that flexibility and have time with her and have my business so it's a win-win yeah that's a great that's a great example of present moment how you know how you felt about not going back to you know going back there and making the decision based on how you were feeling in the moment and being true to yourself yeah, I mean, it's not that it, it's definitely not an easy, an easy process, but, um, I, yeah, I just, I feel like a lot of, a lot of my work is about getting people back to the place when they were children, when as children, if you think about it, their impulse is towards something that, uh, they have a key they have strong intuition and they, they don't have that self doubt that adults right. have. And yeah. so it's, 
you know, they're interested in something or uh, they have a curiosity or their imagination kind of opens up or they want to connect with a friend, they, they do it. They, co- they go towards it. They follow their, their inner drive and that momentum and that intuition. And so a lot of, I feel like what I do, especially with adults, is kind of getting them back to that place. Yeah. And so being with her and it, it sort of, um, it realigns with the, the, the utmost importance of, mm-hmm. I'll get with that intuition and not only, you know, identifying it, but also following through <laughs> with it mm-hmm. to have, to have it be, um, something you actualize, something you really put into practice. Mm-hmm. And so although it's not, it's not something that's always easy. Um, you might not see the, the reward right away. It, ta- it takes time, but, but I, I feel like that's, um, it's really, it's really key, I think in, in life and our personal life, and our relationship. Mm-hmm. And our businesses to to follow through. Okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah! Wow. So it sounds like you do really deep inner child work in an alternative fashion, almost like alternative medicine where they use uh, aromatherapy, essential you know, or essential oils, or or um, what is that modality where you use the energy uh, re- reiki or something like that it, it's it's like as if it's a really deep inner child work but it's fun <laughs> and and kind of fun you know d- depends on what you're going through but it's um you know and it's funny because a lot of people when they hear when they hear of um of my of my work of a, a drama therapy or creative art therapy specifically yeah they tend to think that it that that it is um you know for children or, or like you said, you know, doing inner, inner child work. And, and, and it does, it's actually like connects with that. But, you know, I, I'd also like to say that it works for, for anyone and, and everyone. I mean, like I said, I've worked with, um, you know, children with autism that, that, that before would not have communication or verb. Like, like awesome. <laughs> and then they're forming sentences and saying, I love you and have emotional. Oh health. my God. A mom that must like for the parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. I actually, one of the parents wanted me to, to video mm-hmm. to have I would videotape their son's work and mm-hmm. um, drama therapy work and just for the therapeutic process for the mm-hmm. child benefit. But the parent said, "Wow, you know, we we just really believe in, in what you're doing in this kind of work. That if you put it on YouTube, I want it to be public. I want people to know about drama therapy. So I did, and it, the video got like 50, you know fifteen hundred views. <laughs> but um, but so yeah, so yeah. I mean, it is for children, but I, you know, I've worked with. I've worked with so many types of, of people, elderly and wheelchair bound and, you know, mental illness, um, marginalized, uh, you know, people and, and individuals, um, you know, trauma, abuse, um, you name it. And it just, it connects with, with people's spirits. And the, the way that I work is very much, you know, using presence and very much in the moment. So if, the topic of say oppression comes up where people feel that they have a lot of fear or some want something is keeping them back. Uh, that's a lot of what I find that they feel blocked, Mm -hmm. um, in, in some way, um, that what we do a lot of the times is that through this kind of creative, um, expression, creative Mm -hmm. arts therapy or drama therapy, we actually have them enroll and take on that role of fear. What would fear say? Or maybe I would take on as a, as a drama therapist, I'm also in the process Mm -hmm. talking about being in the present moment. I might take on their fear. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so what does that look like? And so when we accept something and we really take it on, it actually transforms the moment. It, mm-hmm. it, it loses the energy. It dissipates that, that strong uh, quality that, that it has over us. Mm-hmm. It kind of, once we kind of give it a name and, and play with it and take it on and talk from that point of view, it doesn't control us anymore. It's an experience. It's a feeling. It's a moment. And just like any feeling or moment, like yeah. it's a poster it passes get free <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. My favorite so, word <laughs> yeah so so it's it's I, I have a lot of joy I really and it I helped me so much yeah. I could see it all over you <laughs> it, it definitely helped me a lot in mm-hmm. 
in my life as well. I mean, when I was studying it, a, a lot of how we were trained was by doing it. We would learn a theory or intervention or technique or tool through actually doing it ourselves. And um, what I found was that, you know, I met, I met my, my husband now at the time. I mean, I met him and I felt at that moment, I felt prepared. I felt like I can, I can uh, be open to this moment in this situation. So a lot transformed for me personally and, and professionally because of, of this work. So yeah. yeah. And connect. Yeah. That's what I think about what I mean when I mean inner child work, I don't mean just for kids, but I mean going to the root cause of your issues. Hundred percent. A hundred percent. Absolutely. You know, and I even just I just wrote an article about this too with parenting, about parenting I, I mm-hmm. called it parenting with attunement and creativity. And that's mm-hmm. absolutely the first thing I, I, I have on there is, you know, being present with your mm-hmm. with your presence, really feeling um you know, feeling in the moment, if we have our own chaos, we have our own anger, and we can name it and say to our child, you know, I'm just a little bit upset right now. You know, it's not burdening them, or it's not victimizing or manipulating the situation. It's just kind of uh, dating a feeling, moving through that. Um, but the first thing I talked about, too, when you're naming the um, inner child work, is for adults, parents to do internal homework. So, so mm-hmm. thinking about what were the messages that were sent to yeah. me as a how was I yeah. parents? What what were the messages sent to me? Uh, it, whether they were verbally, mm-hmm. "Hey, you're this," or uh, or non verbally mm-hmm. by parents, you know, maybe ignoring a child or you know whatnot. So, um, and, and we really get to that place, mm-hmm. and then through the work of drama therapy, we might have that particular uh, group member or client maybe take on the role of a parent they right. wish they had. Yeah. Or or talking, mm-hmm. maybe we'll put a chair and talking to their actual parent, right. you know, living or deceased, and say, hey, you know what, I love you, but I really wish that I heard this. I yes. really wish that you loved me. I really mm-hmm. wish that I heard that you were proud of me and mm-hmm. um, things like that. So it's it, it's repairing the, the wounds. Right. The- oh, amazing. Well, I know that there, you know, as people have been listening to you, they're going to want to know more about you. So how can they read this article you wrote and how can they learn how to work with you and learn more about you? Okay, thank you, Anna. So my I have my website is uh, the name of my business, Creative Connection. So it's um www.creativeconnection spelled with uh K I N E C T I O N S. Um, so I have all events on there. I do trainings and different workshops and offering Skype sessions or phone sessions. Mm-hmm. My full links are on there, um, things like that. So that's definitely a way to connect with me and, you know, on Facebook and um, my link is, is for Facebook is on the website. And so I, I, I really have um, a, a, a large goal of just having, having this work with creative arts and, and drama therapy mm-hmm. on, be known by the mainstream, mm-hmm. be known and accepted and for, for people to see what I do. There's video uh, yeah. of needs video. to be known. <laughs> I, I have some videos of, of my work, you know, with children and with, um, a, a, um, a, one of, she was a student that was actually interviewing me. And so she wanted to do a bit of a, um, like a, a role playing session. And so she it videotaped and she wanted it to be for educational purposes out there. So I have a video, of my work with her using psychodrama, some of the work that we were talking about in her childhood. Um, on there, so people that are that are interested, just just check it out. It's, okay. it's yeah. All right, Thanks. and I'm going to be including um, your information down below in the comment section too uh, of this video, so people can reach out to you just by a click of a button. Cool. Do you have any <laughs> questions or anything else you want me to? Oh, I've got lots of questions for you. We'll have to do another segment. <laughs> I want to know why you use it. you chose to use a K. I want to, you know, <laughs> I have, I I would like to um, have you back on again, definitely, if you would be willing. All right. <laughs> Supporter of your work, and I love what you're doing, and oh, thank uh, you. And I'd love to be a part of it in any way. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Well, thank you, Brooke, so much of Creative Connections. Uh, for being one of my experts, and um, I, I just really appreciate you taking part in this interview. I really appreciate you having me. You're That's welcome. <laughs> All right. <Thank> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>